Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm sure by now many of you have seen this post or something similar to this and I'm not condemning anyone who has shared this post because I've seen it quite a bit pop up on my news feed and just wondered, hmm, that is a little sketchy that King James wrote a book called Demonology. To me, what it draws to mind is someone who was writing a book about maybe how to summon demons or something. I really wasn't sure, but I never investigated it. I just thought, eh, it's probably just some other guy named James that was a king. Surely it wasn't the same one who compiled some of the books of the Bible. And if you have done some research into the lost books and all of that, you've probably dug into this topic. But I, in my research of the books of the Bible and why certain ones were removed, back then and all of the things that went on never really came across this other book of his for whatever reason that just never popped up in the search results well last night I seen a lot of people commenting and saying that's why I don't read the Bible and there's the guy that wrote this book like you can see here it says the man who wrote the Holy Bible first of all King James did not write the Bible at all <laughs> he didn't write it he was one of those that helped compile some of the books and did make some decisions back then him and several others on which books were to be kept in the in the printed King James version and there's certain books that didn't make it through and it's good to research things and find out why don't just put your trust in one guy and a lot of people get really angry when you question King James and they're like how dare thy question King James he is the holiest of holies and they have no clue what this guy stood for or who he was in general. It's very good to question things. I don't um, think we should be angry at anyone for investigating things. You need to let the Father guide you into different avenues. Don't be misled by certain posts or certain things like this and just throw away the Bible. But look into things and let the Holy Spirit guide you. But this is one of those situations I definitely wanted to look into this. And so last night I did. And I was surprised at what I found because this book, Demonology by King James, was in fact written by this guy, the same one we see here, King James, for the, from the um, King James Version. But he definitely didn't write the Bible. The Bible is one of the oldest historical books and the most accurate with the most fulfilled prophecies of any book to date. We have millions of artifacts that back up the events that happened in the Bible and it's one of the most heavily banned and scrutinized books of all time. I've actually been talking to someone who wants a copy of the Bible because it's banned where they are at, believe it or not. So um, if you have a Bible, take care of it. Not many people do. With the online book burning that we're seeing with Truth, these are some of our last remaining history books that paint a picture of who we are and where we come from. But um, to get started... I found a PDF version of this book. I will share a link in the description. I'm not encouraging you to read this as it's the gospel or anything, but it's not what I thought. It's actually a book warning us about witchcraft and magic and sorcery and the things that the Bible actually warns us about, the deceivers, what they're doing, and the people that they are using. And this stuff is real. You can talk to people who have escaped this deception. The enemy is deceiving and using people for his own benefit with the intent to destroy and deceive the ones he's using as well as as many as he can take out with him. So this is the preface to the reader from um, King James right here. And it says, The fearful abounding at this time in this country of these detestable slaves and of the devil and it's spelled a little differently that's how they spelled things back then so it's kind of hard to read along with this book but you'll get used to the way they do this but it says the witches or enchanters hath moved me beloved reader to dispatch and post this following treaties of mine not in any wise as I protest to serve for a show of my learning and in in gene I don't know if it's ingenious or what that word stands for but only moved of conscience to press thereby so far as I can to resolve the doubting hearts of many, both that such assaults of Satan are most certainly practiced, 
and the instruments thereof merits most severely to be punished against the damnable opinions of two principally in our age, whereof the one called Scott, an Englishman, is not ashamed in public print to deny that there can be such a thing as witchcraft, and so maintenances the old error of the Sadducees in denying of spirits. The other called, whatever that word is, a German physician, sets out a public apology for all these crafty folks, whereby procuring for their impunity. He plainly berise himself to have been one of that profession, and for to make this treaty the more pleasant and facile, and forgive me for butchering some of these words, I'm not really studied on how he wrote and, and spoke, but I have put in form of a dialogue which I have divided into three books, the first speaking of magic in general and necromancy, and this is the same type of stuff that still goes on now, that the evil one likes to convince people that they can talk to the dead, which they can't, and um, take on different forms and, and make people believe they're talking or praying to dead saints or whatever. Pretty much the whole ghost you know, era they've had with getting people like me as a child to believe in ghosts and talking to dead ones and basically summoning demons with like Ouija boards and things that are completely evil. And this is nothing new. It dates back to biblical times. It's been going on forever, these types of deceptions and wizardry and all that. But the second of sorcery and witchcraft and the third contains a discourse of all these kinds of spirits and scepters that appears and troubles persons. Together with the conclusion of the whole work, my intention in this labor is only to prove two things, as I have already said. The one, such devilish arts have been and are... The other, what exact trial and severe punishment they merit. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to stop there. I don't want to read the whole book. This PDF is a little out of alignment, you can see here. And um, you can zoom in, scoot it over, move it around. But uh, I'm going to quote a couple things here because I, I haven't read this entire book. It's only a hundred and something pages. It probably would take you know a few hours for most of you speed readers to read. It would take me probably weeks of procrastinating to get around to reading the entire thing. The only book I seem to be able to read is the Bible and the lost books and things like that of interest. If I'm not interested, it's really hard for me to uh, finish a book cover to cover. It has to be very intriguing. But um, this book goes on and it has two people going back and forth, almost kind of in somewhat of a debate about this and talking about things. And there's a lot of wisdom in here as well that I'm finding. Like on page 7, I believe it was page 7. Let me look at the bottom here. And it's talking about why such things would happen. How would God allow, you know, the enemy to do certain things and for mankind to be turned over to such evil ways. And this is one of the men talking here. It kind of puts their initials or the first three letters of his name. It says, Although man in his creation was made in the image of the Creator, Genesis 1, yet through his fall, having once lost it, it is but restored again and apart by grace only to the elect. So all the rest, falling away from God, are given over in the hands of the devil, that enemy, to bear his image, and being once so given over, the greatest and the grossest impiety is the pleasantest and most delightful unto them. That's really something that I find true that's going on and has been going on, not just in the world today, but in the past, is they delight in these things that we cannot fathom and we don't understand it. Some of them, many of them were born into it. And like my brother and I have said in another video, Pray for your enemies. These people are so deceived, it's on, a, it's on a new level. The reason that many of the, what we call elite, famous people, the ones that are super depressed all the time and they have this void in their eyes, is because they are the emptiest humans alive. They have seen suffering, sacrifices, things we couldn't imagine. They want to be set free. They feel they have 
sold their soul and there's no hope. But they have been deceived. They can get out of it. There's always a way out. The Father can set them free in the blink of an eye. We really need to pray for those people. And a lot of them do tell all. And many people who are sort of, you know, telling on these people like Kevin Spacey or the Clintons or whatever are dying because these powers of darkness do not like being exposed for what they are. They want the world to not believe in them to convince you they don't exist. And from what I've read so far, this book is pretty much saying, look, these things are bad. Witchcraft, sorcery, magic. It was in the Bible. It's being practiced. And if you look into it, you'll find out this stuff still goes on. Bohemian Groves. There's high wizards over there. This stuff is put in children's cartoons and books. I've seen, you know, one of my little nieces was given a Disney book, and it was a book of spells, how to do spells from some witchcraft show that's trending on TV. It's it's out there. They're trying to get your children to fall in love with it. And I, as a young kid, did notice the theme of most shows was there was magic, witchcraft, wizardry, and the evil ones in the shows were always the most powerful. And sometimes the good guys just got lucky, even though they weren't very powerful, Somehow they won, usually, and it was a happy ending. But it was always this super powerful and almost cool type of evil people that they were up against. So um, this book here, definitely, from what I can tell, I haven't read it all, is not a reason to throw out your King James Bible because this isn't the author of the Bible who wrote it. It's quotes from uh, several different people put together to talk about witchcraft, how it's bad, and why it's practiced, who does it, and pretty much just trying to prove that it is real. And it does give some some wisdom along the way about the enemy and how he deceives mankind through things. It even talks about the stars and people using the stars in astronomy and astrology, how it can be used for good, for God's purposes, but it could also be used for evil. So there's things that are still going on today. He said that even Christians of that time were using those things like the stars and the stuff that they use today with um, what do they call that stuff um, horoscopes and whatnot lots of different things that are psychic in nature using the stars and using them to do things like predicting the future and future events and signs that are not of God so that's what's going on now and back then when he was writing this book it was only I believe in the 1500s, let's see, 15, what year, let me scroll up here, 1597, not that long of a book, it stops at page 66 here, but when you scroll through, I'm guessing because of the extra pages, um, let me see how many pages it has in total, 104, so I'm guessing there's extra pages down at the end, plus the several up above, the preface and all of that, so um, scroll down, ooh, there's pictures, what was that, I just saw a picture. Picture books are my favorite. I get bored if there's no pictures. But um, there's actually pictures in this book. I don't know if this was from that time period or added later. But uh, looks like some witch trials going on. Definitely something to look into for you guys who are seeking truth. I'm not saying this is a good book. I literally have only read the first several pages. I think about 16 or so. So... Um, do your own research. Don't just fall into the falling away from the Bible because King James wasn't a saint. No one ever claims he was a saint. He was just one of the people who had a responsibility of piecing together the Bible, the books that he had had, because a lot of, for a long time, those books were kept hidden from the mainstream, and it was very few who were able to Put things together and get them in the English language. So overall, his impact on the world is very powerful. He has done some great things with just putting together the books that he did, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and watching what that's done to billions of people who have had access to those Bibles, whether they were gifts or purchased or what. It was a chain reaction. And of course, not everyone that the Father uses is perfect. People like me who were pretty much pulled out of the grave of all of the 
things that we were addicted to, you know, when you are in this world, you can still be set free. Uh, I think the some of the best followers were at one time the worst sinners, and they are thankful for being set free. It's kind of like you've been let go of a death sentence. Well, some people are just getting out of community service, is how it seems. But um, the Father's grace is something you, if you haven't experienced it yet, experience it. The stuff that this book's t talking about with the powers of darkness, a lot of it's true. And don't test those things, because if you want to summon demons, definitely not something that's going to be challenging. You want to experience grace, it is not going to be challenging either. But choose grace first. That love will set you free and help you to not be deceived by this world in ways that so many are because there's a lot of deceptions coming up around the corner. I haven't been watching the news, but from what I hear, things are starting to kind of ramp up and get intense. So I um, just wanted to share this little bit of information with you guys who have probably been influenced by a post similar to the ones that I'm seeing, and I don't want to discourage you from reading the Bible because of that. So, um, again, not condemning anyone who has shared that post. Memes are helping to wake up so many, but try not to share a meme that will discourage people from a relationship with the Father, things that are of the Spirit of the Antichrist. Even if they are trending or seem to make sense, look a little deeper. Go to the Father first because our actions do have an echo, and sometimes it can be eternal in how it leads people in certain directions so uh always stay ready we say this because we care about you the father cares about you he gives you guidelines so that you do not die it's not so that he can punish you when you mess up think about the rules you give your children you give them rules so that they don't walk out in front of a moving car and get ran over not so that they can mess up and that you can just punish them because you're a wrathful parent you love your children so much, and you probably wonder, how can I love these little ones so much? And it's so that you can love them continually when they mess up, because they are going to mess up. And you're still going to love them. You're still going to want them to have eternal life. So, think about that. There's a loving Father who wants time with all of us. We need to go to the next level. I think that what's keeping me from that next level, and has kept me from that next level, is the persecution ramping up. And... It's time to embrace that. Those in the past who have been persecuted unto death have great rewards to come. It's one of those things we need to understand. It's not the Father's will for us to suffer, but the evil one will do everything he can, as you can see, especially with this censorship, to eradicate truth in the powers that slow down their works. So, again, as I always say, you guys are a beloved creation of the Most High. We'll be back very soon. Just wanted to share this really quickly. Love you guys. See you soon.